Hey kids, it's Tressa James, and on this Tressa James Explains, we're looking at Mononikis. So first and foremost, I want to point out, this is one of those dinosaurs that like paleontologists know about, but they're not really popular, they're not toys of them. So when Jurassic World made them, I was super excited. Um, I only have two, and they're both from Jurassic World, so the, the, as far as the figure review won't be, won't be much different. But I want to go ahead and show you this box. This is the Jurassic Escape. And the way Mononikis, you would think it would be, it's, you know, it's M-O-N-O-N-Y-K-U-S. And I think when you first hear the name, your first assumption should be M-O-N-O-N-Y-C-H-U-S. But that first name was actually was ascribed to the animal, but that's actually already a genus for a beetle, I believe, or some, some insect. So that'd be changed for this one when, when, it was, when it was described in the 90s. So one thing to point out in science is that like, there's only so many genuses, you know, that can, if you, if you pick a name and it already exists, you can't use that name, you, usually. There's a couple of exceptions, but usually. So one thing to point out, two of those animals really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and do the unboxing here. This wave comes out with the, uh, let's see, uh, Referencus and the Shin Shingrosaurus, which I did a video before. And then of course, another Velociraptor repaint paint. But the figures, like, what's really neat about them, this is my first one, this one came out first, and then we have this guy. Um, and again, here's the unboxing thing that people crave so much. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it. So, um, it just comes like right away, like, like it hatched from an egg. It's kind of awesome. Anyway, so look at the animal. The first thing um, you that you see, and again, I know the Jurassic World figures are usually like because of the mechanics of them or the engineering of them. They they are they're shaped kind of weird. So the feet are always really big to help balance. But in this case, uh, the long legs like this is really correct. The tiny arms super correct. So so basically, what you're seeing with when a Monomachus it's a member of the group called Avarosaurs. The Avarosaurs, like the name Avarez, Avarosaurs, are found in well, Mongolia for the species, but Asia, North America, and South America, right? So uh, the idea is that they would have, they evolved in like essentially China first, and then their ancestors, their descendants migrated across to South America. So what's going on with this particular one is really neat is that the Jura late Jurassic Avarosaurs would have looked like tiny raptors to the average person. Um, the idea is that they, without the claw on the foot, right, the big claw, they have three claws on the, on the ground and the dew claw, but not the big sickle claw. And what we're seeing basically is they would have looked like just any other small theropod at the time. And in general, as far as diets go, people often associate dinosaurs as being either carnivore or herbivore, right? But the idea is that today environments, we have all kinds of animals that eat different things. Uh, I mean, we have uh, ithiophores, which eat fish, or pythophores, sorry, pythophores eat fish. We associate that with spinosaurus usually. But a lot of dinosaurs that are smaller, a lot of predatory thoropod dinosaurs that are smaller, like uh, this guy and Confugnathus, these guys are thought to be uh, essentially, I won't say fully omnivores, but eating like maybe small but nuts or berries, but depending on where they live and when they live, uh, but also eating like, you know, small insects and like that. But well, what paleontologists believe is that these guys have specialized in eating insects. Now, what, what I'm saying is in the late Jurassic, they look like, quote, generic or general idea for a small theropod by early cretaceous we, we start seeing um the arms the muscle attachments on the arms getting stronger and then by late cretaceous we have these guys with only one finger because you know all the predators have drawn from usually with three fingers like this at a certain point and they, they, they don't have an opposable thumb but the first digit it's like you count them going like this that one usually is more reduced or at least kind of sitting aside uh so what we're seeing with, with the adversaurus is that the early ones have this you know bigger claw here and these fingers are very small if you get to Mononychus, uh, it actually Mononychus, it actually has just one claw. Let me show you that right there. So that's not a mistake. That's actually on purpose, and it's really giant. So when you look at a, like a turkey for Thanksgiving, there's a big kill bone here. Uh, these guys have really large kill bones, which means large muscle attachments. So when they were first discovered, they were thought to be actually uh, primitive birds. Now Archaeopteryx is special because here's Archaeopteryx in its full glory, and you can look at the hand or the four, to the point of this claw is right there. So if you look at any bird. Go to KFC, Popeyes, pick your franchise. The wings are like this. They have tiny little fingers and they have these feathers. So these guys being having this one little finger, and again, this is late Jurassic. This is late Cretaceous, about 70 million years ago. And the idea is that they would have lost more of their finger and have these claws, right? That's what they thought initially. Um, even then, they were trying to figure out where to put it in family tree. And the next thought was, oh, it's like the other, uh, the Ornithomimus. So there's Gallimimus from Jurassic World. And these are not to scale. These are like three feet long. And this guy is like, if I remember correctly, like 17 feet long. So it's way bigger. But you can see these two similar sized figures. They have similar anatomies. 
that doesn't necessarily mean they they are they are they are derived from the same ancestors or at least closely related. The idea is here what we think is convergent evolution because yes, they both have bird like traits, but the idea is that these guys evolved those traits to run like ostriches full speed and eat weird things, and these guys evolved to probably eat bugs. And I say, why, why does that matter? What, what, why the bugs? I'm glad you asked. Here's the thing. Um, Insects have been around on land at least since the Devonian period, so we know that there are bugs flying around doing bug stuff. But it wasn't to the uh, the invention, the evolution, the adaptation, the uh, mutation of flowering plants in the Cretaceous period, angiosperms. And then when we see flowering plants show up, we see a boom in insects. So things like um, ants and bees and butterf not butterflies, not butterflies, well butterflies are around, their ancestors are around, but termites, those kind of bugs are there, and they're social insects. So if you are a, let's say, Compslognathus and you're in Germany, what we now call Germany in the Jurassic period, the bugs are just like not living together. They're just kind of everywhere doing bug stuff. You're trying to catch them if you can. But if you are now in the late Cretaceous period of, let's say, Mongolia, and there are termite mounds, all of a sudden you have a concentrated part of food. It's like a buffet for you. And what we're thinking with these really strong muscles in the chest and the arms and this one huge claw is these guys are digging into the termite, termite mounds and eating that way. Now, what's cool about this is that there are other other sources that have teeth on the side here, but not on the front. So what is that like today? And again, that's why taking biology is so important to paleontology. Uh, we look at our modern insect eaters, like aardvarks, and sometimes armadillos eat, they eat a variety of things. Uh, and of course, ant eaters. And then we have pangolins, which are all different kinds of mammal. And if you're interested in these guys, I'll put a link in the description for my mammal toy model page. You can see the different orders they are, they're in. Um, but the idea is that these all these animals have these very narrow snouts, and Monomicus has a very narrow snout. And I also want to point out too that you know there's a food source abundantly available, so something's going to evolve to take it. Most dinosaurs get bigger over time. These guys got smaller in general, and that's really unusual. But again, if there's a food source driving that, I mean, these guys really are modified. They're really heavily derived. And the idea is that these really strong little arms here are, are for digging and, and like that. You say, well, how do you know that? question um in, in alberta we have alberta nikes their cousin and there's actually trace fossils on top of uh termite mounds or showing that they're digging basically trying to find it so that's kind of cool i mean we think of just dinosaurs as t-rex and velociraptor these really giants and or these these specialized animals in that way but these guys are taking these little tiny jobs like you know because we always point out with dinosaurs that uh but you know the Mesozoic, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous is the age of reptiles. But it's not to the Cretaceous period that it's called the age of dinosaurs. You say, why does that matter? Because in the Triassic, dinosaurs were like, first of all, latecomers, and they were a minority group in the <laughs> strata, in the environments. By Jurassic, dinosaurs are, take, are taking over. There's more of them, but still, there's other major reptile groups that are there. And by Cretaceous, dinosaurs are taking every, if not almost every land niche that's not flying from a house cat to like, you know, a titanosaur. So the idea is that they're taking this job of being a small bug eating thing. That's really kind of cool. And here we have this very specialized animal. And the word for that is derived. Derived meaning that, you know, there's the ancestral design and they've kind of branched off. But I didn't tell speaking of that, I didn't tell you about his, his family tree. Um, it's not a bird, per se. Even though they're seen with feathers and the idea is that Mononychus itself did not have proof of feathers, but their cousins do. So therefore, it's like, well, their group probably does. Um, and then, of course, they... The over the uh, not over raptors the um, or nestomimids, these guys um, we think have feathers too actually, but again they're on a different part of this branch. Now um, I'll put a link to for my theropod page. But the idea is within predatory dinosaurs, there's like the there's a carnosaurs or like the allosaurs, acrocanthosaurs, gymnosaurs, and then there's a salurosaurus, which usually this this feather is smaller dinosaurs. Think your raptors and over raptors and tyrannosaurs and all that, but they branch even more from there. So there's a group called Manoraptor, which are the most bird-like dinosaurs, and that includes the Oviraptors and the Velociraptors and their cousins, and of course we think they're in that group because they are so bird-like. And the idea is that if you were to see one, it would be a weird-looking bird, but it'd be like a little bird to you with a lizard face. Imagine that little lizard face. Also, their teeth and jaws are very weak, and you say, well, you know, why would an animal evolve weaker jaws? Well, humans have done that because we have fire. Uh, not like we're fire, you know, but the idea is that we actually cook our food. And when you think about it, when you eat like raw food, vegetables, or even if you eat really rare, rare steaks, you're doing a lot more chewing to break it down. When you cook your food, what you're doing basically is you're pre-cooking, you're pre-chewing it for yourself. By cooking it, you're breaking it apart. 
That way when you put it in your mouth, it's less work, and therefore for your gut, it's even less work. That's why sauropod long necks had really big guts, we think, because they're eating a lot of food and they're having to break it down in their gut, basically. And they're, not, they're not even showing it, they're just stripping the leaves, swallowing it a hole, and they're processing, processing it down here. So we're humans, we chew our food after it's been cooked, usually. Then that's, that, that's pre-cooking, right? Cooking is pre-chewing for us. Uh, for these guys, they're not ripping and tearing large prey animals or eating like bugs. And you don't need a strong jaw to crush up bugs, ask Timon and Pumbaa, those two gourmet chefs of the African uh, as Aswajan. But the idea here is that these guys are really neat. And again, those long legs are actually accurate. The feathers here are implied by many other relatives. So this is a pretty decent model. The only thing I would say was weird is the feet are pretty big. Uh, and, and again, that's the engineering of the figure. That's the fact that they're saying this figure has the, the mouse properly, which I, I don't like the fact that it's not as accurate, but I appreciate that it won't fall down. <laughs> so, um, and if you're wondering why I bought both of them, you know me, I am a, a sucker for repaints. And the idea is that if you are doing some kind of diorama or display, you could have mating pairs, you know, the you know males and females competing for each other. And uh, the idea is, or usually, usually it's males competing against other males for females to choose them, natural selection. But the last thing to point out too is where it's from, uh, location, location, location. So you have the Numeg Society, society Numeg Formation in Mongolia, which is how, this is host to the Rizinosaurus, and none, none of the new ones are into scale. The Rizinosaurus, Dinochirus, uh, Alioramus. I will also note that I, I have my Alioramus video. I said Alioramus the entire video. I'm sorry about that. Tarbosaurus here. And of course, Sanchia. Now, there are lots of other animals in the environment, uh, lots of other dinosaurs in the environment, but they don't make toys of them. So these are the ones that if you're gonna be playing with uh, your Mononychus, you wanna have it with these guys. And again, Jurassic World has made a Tarbosaurus and Ellie Remus, and I believe the Therizinosaurus is coming out for the new movie, Dominion. So you have those animals that are in the exact same time, exact same environment. So there you go, building prehistoric ecology. That being said, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, next week, I think we're doing Megaceros, giant antler deer from the Ice Age. Thank you.